Hi, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com and uh, you know, I, I thought we'd just divert from our normal type of conversations about jacks and patch cords and patch panels and everything else and we start to go into uh, some sort of higher level, talking about theories and stuff like that. And most people who watch my videos are either uh, IT people or people who want to be in IT. So today I thought we'd start in a, a series of talking about how to subnet. Uh, how to come up with IP addresses that work in a, uh, a network and, and, and why they work and, and, and how to figure out you know, uh, the network and how to figure out broadcasts and how many IP addresses you, you can assign to different people in different areas and things like that. But to start, you've got to understand some basic things. And so I'm going to start out today just with binary. Uh, what is a binary code? What is, what is a bit? What is a byte? What is... What is hex, um, you know, and, and, and how do you figure it out? How can you read binary? It's not that hard, actually. It's pretty easy. Uh, once you get it down and once you understand it, it's, uh, it's, it's real easy once you understand it. So I'm going to walk you through it. Stay with me. And uh, we're going to just deal with, with the binary today and the hex today. And then I'm going to make some other videos down the road, and they're going to be discussing uh, subnetting. They're going to be talking about the seven layers of the Internet. And we're also going to be talking about uh, the uh, TCP IP uh, stack. Okay, so let's, let's use the board. Let's see um, some of the definitions, what they are. So you're not confused as we're talking about them. So a byte is a six, uh, I'm sorry, a byte is an eight uh, digit code. Now I always put a little space in there. That's just me, okay? But it says eight digits all the way across. So that would actually equal zero, just one. Um, but it's eight digits all across. So this whole thing right here is a byte. And if you take the byte and you divide it in half, what you have is two nibbles. Uh, I know it sounds kind of strange. I don't know if that's slang. But it's two nibbles for one byte. And, uh, uh, if uh, this is one binary position, each of these are a binary position. They're represented by zeros. And you can only have two possible uh, representations in, in a, a binary code. It's either going to be a one or it's going to be a zero. It cannot be anything else, okay? And I know some people say, well, you know, I've seen it where it says A, F, and, and uh, 3, uh, D, and things like that. That's hex. That's not binary. So hex is a representation of binary. But you've got to learn binary first before you learn hex. So let's talk about binary first. So remember uh, that it can only be a 1 or a 0. Now, another thing you need to remember, OK? So when you're dealing with computers, those things were, which are within the case of a computer, hard drive, processor, things like that, you're talking about bytes. You're not talking about bits. And so when you have a terabyte drive, you don't have a terabit drive. But when you're talking about communications, like your internet, you have 50 bits uh, speed, not 50 bytes speed. That would be phenomenal if you have 50 bytes. But it's in bits. So anytime you're dealing with communications, it's bits. Anytime you're dealing with computers, it's bytes. So let's, let's start working from here. So um, what is it for a 1? Well, 1 would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 equals 1. Yeah, that's like a no-brainer, right? You kind of figured that out just looking at it. That's kind of easy. But um, each of these areas here have a different, um, what would you call it, a different... Uh, representation. So let's go through the representations as we're talking. So right here, um, this one, if that's a 1, that means 1. This means 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So 128 would be something like this. It would be 1, 1, just one, and the rest of zeros would equal 128. So if you wanted a 192, 
it would be one one zero 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 equals one ninety two. It's sixty four and twenty eight together, one ninety two. And you can go all the way across. So if you had all ones like this, it would equal two fifty six. So one byte. The maximum number one byte can represent is 256. Now, if you want to go higher than 256, then you're into another byte over here. So, um, you know, this would be, if we want zeros all the way to the end there, that would be uh, 257 now. So that's, that's the difference in a uh, byte and a bit and a nibble. And so let's go through some of these so you understand what I'm talking about. So let's, let's take it to 2, and then we're going to go to hex after that, and I'm going to give you an example. So 2 would be 2, right? You see it right here? That's 2. Now, how do you get 3? Well, you get 3 by adding 2 and a 1. So it's 0, 0, 1, 1 equals 3. See how it's going together? If you want a 4, the next process would be 0, 1, 0, 0, 4, 5. Well, 5 is a 4 and a 1, right? Bear with me here. <coughs> and we're just going to go right down the road here. I hope you can see uh, the progression here as far as the ones and zeros if you follow the top. Now you can write this out. You know, if you want to practice it yourself, you can write this out and figure out what you're, where you're at. Now, just, that's just a basic overview of binary, okay? And you've got to have binary to have an IP address. And um, it has 32 uh, binary digits for an IP a version 4 address. So you're going to have 32 of these uh, zeros and ones that represent your address. Um, and we're going to talk about this in another video, but we're going to divide up what the network is and we're going to divide up with what a broadcast uh, IP address is within that network and, and what is the network within that, that IP address and how many IP addresses you can have within an, you know, a certain particular IP address. So we're going to discuss that in, in other videos down the road, but today we're just going to talk about binary, and now we're going to talk about a little bit about hex. So I'm going to finish this up, and uh, then we're going to start talking about some hex. So I'm going to go to 10 on this. So, of course, 8, 0, 0, no, that would be 9, I'm sorry. 1 equals 9, and then 1, 0, 1, 0, equals 10. Well, that doesn't work with hex. You can't have your, your two digits in a, in a nibble uh, representing a hex code, because you can only have a total of two digits representing a whole binary code. So just remember, these are all zeros down here. I'm not writing them all out. So if I want to represent hex um, 10, I can't put 10 there. That doesn't work. It's a hex uh, symbol. It's not a, uh, it's not, it doesn't work for binary. We've got to have something else that represents 10 in hex, and it's not going to be 1, 0. Now remember what hex is. So hex is a shorthand for binary, and you're going to see it a lot like with your NIC card, network interface card that's in your computer. You're going to see it sometimes in documentation. Um, you're going to see it sometimes in, um, in uh, different areas of computers. So you need to be able to go back and forth between hex and binary. It's actually pretty easy, so it's not a problem. Just remember, when you go to two digits, that's no longer a hex code. So you have hex from 0 to 9, but you can't have two digits in a hex code. Um, so you can only have one digit in a hex code when you're dealing with just those four digits in a binary. So 
Um, well, uh, well, you know, this is a nibble, so we're just dealing with one nibble at a time, okay? So uh, at this point, you can't have 10. So y what do they replace it with? Well, they replace it with an alpha. So let's start dealing with the hexadecimal. Um, hex stands for hexadecimal. And uh, what you're going to have is you're going to have a, a series of numbers, and you're going to have a series of letters, A through F. Uh, it does not go above F, and you'll see why here in a second. When we're dealing with uh, hexadecimal, remember, we're only dealing with a nibble, not a whole bite. So your hexadecimal may look like something like um, uh, 3F. That's, that's a whole bite. So imagine eight digits now is explained in just an alphanumeric code of two digits. And this is how I'm going to explain how it's, it's, it's shown. Okay, so a whole byte is represented by two digits. So let's say it's, it's three for the, the first nibble right here, which this does not represent three. And let's say the second nibble is some sort of uh, alpha uh, here. So we'll say D, 3D. Okay, so when we have a, a 3D, that just said those two digits here represent eight binary digits. So it's a shorthand for your uh, binary. So that's, that's the difference between binary and hex. This represents a binary code, those two digits. So let's take a look. How do we get to uh, alpha codes? Well, obviously, now we're talking about that 10. Can't have 10. A 10 is impossible in a hex system. And again, we're dealing with just now just one nibble, okay? I'll point out later how we end up with two digits in hex. But this cannot be represented by anything else except for one uh, alpha or numeric uh, symbol. So when we get to 10, you can't put 10 there. So what you got to put at 10 <coughs> is you got to put an A. So it's actually 10. A represents 10. So let's start over here again with the nibble. <coughs> And let's go with 11. So 1011, what does that represent in hex, hexadecimal? What does it represent? It's going to represent B. So B is 11. So of course, 1011 is 11 because you have 8, 2, that's 10, and 1, that's 11, right? According to this standard right here. So it's 8. Um, zero, so that, that's not a four there, so it's going to be eight plus two, so that's ten, plus one is eleven. So, you know, eight, zero, plus uh, two, plus one, if you add them all up, plus signs there, you're going to end up with eleven. That's how you end up with, with eleven there. So, of course, let's follow it through now, okay? <coughs> So it's next is going to be 12, and you can edit this out. I'm just going to go through the rest, and I'll bring you back. 1100. 1100. Zero, zero. One, one, zero, zero. Okay, so let's start again. You're right. There is no 2. 1100 <laughs> zero, zero equals 12. Now I'm going to drop out of the video, and I'm going to write out the rest, and we're going to come back to video. Okay? Okay, so now I wrote out the rest of the hex symbols, and, and of course this is the hex symbols right here. This little thing in parentheses is just to show you the numeric uh, equivalent. So, <clears throat> if my first digits, my first four digits, was, uh, let's say, um, so if we want to represent that 3D, remember that 3D we wanted to represent? Now we're dealing with two hex symbols, so that means we're dealing with a full uh, byte. So what is 3? Well, 3 is going to be, we're going to write it out here, 0, 0, 1, 1. That's 3. And then, of course, the rest of the byte is going to be D up here. So it's going to be 1, 1, 0, 1. And that equals 3D in hex. So this right here is 3, and this right here is D. So that's your hex. Now, you know, in reality, hex is for humans. So we can write out a IP address or any binary address in hex. This makes it easier. 
Okay, 3D represents eight, um, uh, you know, a whole byte. But remember, each symbol is a, um, is a nibble. So just curious, or curious, it's kind of interesting that if you have all ones, it's going to be F, F. And if you're 32 digits in your <coughs> IP version 4 address is all ones, it's going to be a broadcast. Uh, or it could be a broadcast, all Fs. So anytime you see all Fs, that's a symbol of a broadcast. So today, in this video, we talked about binary. You can either have an on or an off. You know, the switch on your computer sometimes, if you look at it, it has a zero or a one. You know, that's a new model of international on and off for everybody. But at any rate, um, you can either have a zero or one. You do not have any other digits except zeros and ones. And it's the placement of where the ones and zeros are that makes a difference in the value. So, of course, it always starts at 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. And it, um, it doubles. So, one, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8. It just doubles all the way across. And that's how you get all these numbers. And, of course, when we get to 10, when it comes to hexadecimal, hexadecimal, hex, um, you, you know, it's represented by A, not one zero, because then that would break the code of a hexadecimal code. Uh, again, hexadecimal is, is for humans. Uh, binary is for computers. Um, also remember that computers deal with bytes. Um, uh, to communications deals with bits. There is a difference. You know, once in a while I get, I just say the wrong thing. I know that that's what it is, but I say the wrong thing. Uh, when it comes to bits and bytes and nibbles. So, you understand what a nibble is? It's a half a byte. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? They call it a nibble? It has to be slang. I don't know. Just heard so many people talk about it. It's always, they always call it a nibble. So, to me, it's a nibble. It's a half a byte uh, is a nibble. So, again, my name is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com, and thank you for your patience in watching this. This is really good stuff to have if you're an IT guy. You should have this down. If you're just starting in IT, this is a good foundation, and we're going to be talking about subnetting in the future. It seems to be an area where a lot of people just seem to don't like it. They have their, their, their subnet calculators, subnetting calculators, and, and all their math and everything else. I'm going to show you an easy way that you don't have to worry about the math. It just makes it easy. And if you're going to take a Cisco test, Especially if you're going to take the CCENT and the CCNA, there's going to be a lot of questions about subnetting. And I can show you a quick way to subnet. I can show you a quick way that you don't have to worry about math because you can understand all this and screw up the math on the test because you're in a hurry. And uh, there's an easier way to go about it when you're taking the test. So we will discuss that in other uh, videos. Again, Jim Gibson, CableSupply.com. Thank you for watching.